Hi and welcome to part 3 of my HDR tutorial. My name is Jeff from PhotoWalk Pro and today I'm going to walk you through converting a single file into a pseudo HDR. Now this is a single file right here and I just want to show you a little bit of what you can do with a, uh, a single file. Uh, if you have a good one and has all the right elements, uh, this is one that I took in Roanoke Island and this is my conversion. Um, these show up a little light in the video but I uh, invite you to come to PhotoWalk Pro and look at some of my images up in there if you want to get a, a real idea of what they look like. So let's go ahead and jump right in because I've only got a few minutes to tell you how to do this but it's not that hard. Um, if you're working in a Mac, first of all let me tell you, you can hit the control. I'm going to go ahead and find a uh, number seven right here looks like it's ready to be converted and you can see it's it's kind of flat and overcast but um, if you're in Mac you can control click, go to open with and there's your PhotoMax Pro right there and you can click on that and, and it'll convert it and take you right to tone mapping. But for those in the PC environment, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through how to do this. And let's go to Photomatics. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the Automate menu, and we're going to click on Single File Conversion. That's going to open up this little dialog box here. The first thing we want to do is choose from low to high dynamic range. We're going to click Convert Raw File or 16-bit TIFF into a Radiance RGBE.HDR. Now, you could also choose Open EXER. It depends on what you like. Um, I just use the .hdr. Uh, next is our source. We're going to select our folder, and that's already done for me. I'm going to go down here and find my file, which was Roanoke 7. And it's zipping by awfully fast, so there we go. Roanoke 7. And the last is where you want that file to end up. Now you can click on this one right here, and let me zoom in just so you can see this a little better. You can click over here and click on Customize Location, and then you choose the folder where you'd like it to go. Or you can click on this one up here, which is I have done, which is create under source folder. So wherever your image comes from, whichever folder it's coming from, that's where your image is going to end up as an HDR. All right. I'm going to go ahead and I've got my file selected. I'm going to click on run. Now, something to note, if you make any changes, it's going to deselect your file. And then you hit run because you think you've already selected it. And then what's going to happen is it's going to start processing all of your images. And then you're going to want to hit the cancel button really fast. Um, so make sure if you make any changes up in here that you come down and make sure you reselect your image from this uh, dialog box over here. All right, so it's converting our image right now. We've got a little uh, dialog right here that lets us know it's working, and now it lets us know it's done. It says uh, one completed, no errors, no warnings, uh, one process complete. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. I'm going to go back to my bridge, and I'm going to look over here, and there's my my new folder, it says PhotoMax Conversion 1. If I click inside, the bridge won't display HDR files, but you know what? It does show me there by the file name that it is there. So I'm going to go back to my PhotoMatics now, and I'm going to open that file. So I'm going to click on File, Open, and, okay, let's see. Let me go to my, um, my folder here. There it is, PhotoMax Conversion 1. And there's Roanoke Island 7 HDR that we just created. I'm going to click Open. Now it's going to open this into the same dialog box that you've seen in other tutorials that I've done. This is the same process. It's not going to be anything different. I'm going to go up here to Automate. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to Process and click on Tone Mapping. And this is just like my past, uh, past tutorials. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I'm going to go down here as I always do and hit Default. And then I'm going to change my color saturation up. I'm going to put my light smoothing down a little bit. That's kind of nice. My luminosity is going to come down. Okay, that looks good. Uh, white point is going to come up, but not too far. I don't want to clip my whites too much. There we go. Maybe a little bit down, a little bit lower. And then my black point comes up. And let's see where that goes. That's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Color, I'm going to warm this up just a little bit. Maybe on plus one. And I'm going to take my saturations up for my shadows and highlights. Okay, and then I'm going to go over into my micro, and I'm going to take my micro contrast all the way up here. And then I'm going to take my micro smoothing down. And then, you know what, I might readdress this luminosity. Let me see what it looks like way up top here. Um, it's not too bad. And that's the thing, you just have to play with it because it doesn't react the same way for every file. Alright, that's pretty decent right there. And then the last thing is my shadow and highlight smoothing. Now, let me show you this highlight thing. This is a perfect example. I talked about this in the last tutorial. Um, you can see how it completely changes the look of the sky when I take that highlight up. 
Now I'm not going to take it all the way back down because what I would really like to do is keep some of these light areas that are poking through here. And you can see if I run it all the way down, those disappear. So I want to bring some of that back. So I'm going to bring that highlights back up just a little bit. And that gives it a little bit more dramatic look. Okay, that's all I'm going to do in Photomatic. So I'm going to click on the Process button. And that's going to take me over to the Save Dialog box. But before I do that, let me talk about the single file conversion. Um, if you want to do this, I did this with a RAW file. If you want to do this with a JPEG, it's, it's, it's still doable. But there are some ways you may want to approach it that are a little different. Um, I would take it into Camera Raw and then process an over and an underexposure and save those in Photoshop. I would just keep processing it over and over and open those three up and then take those three open files and in Photoshop go and do an HDR merge on them and that will give you a little bit more dynamic range. The problem with a, uh, a JPEG is that you've already clipped a lot of that important information out of it but you know what, it still will work. All right, here's our file. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm just going to click close. It'll ask me if I want to save it. And I'm going to, and I'm going to save it in that same folder that I just took that HDR out of. I'm going to click save. Okay. And here's our file right here. And this is back in the bridge. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put it next to the, the other one. Let me put it, go back to the other folder here and just go in here and paste this in because I would like you to see it next to the file that it came from. All right, so here's our before. Let's go full screen on this. There's our before, and there's our after. So there's quite a large difference when I process this as a raw file in Photomatics. All right, now the last thing I'm going to do real quick, and I'm going to run out of time, so I have to do this quickly, is I'm going to take this into Photoshop and just do a couple of quick items to it. I'm going to take the clarity up here. And I'm not going to do that much work in RAW because um, really I don't need to. I did most of that in Photomax. But what I do need to do to this file, and let me go full screen on here, is I need to come over here to my layers. And I'm going to go ahead and do an adjustment layer and make a curves adjustment. And I'm going to darken this image up just a little bit. I'm going to bring this down here. And I'm going to bring this up. And what I'm doing is I'm messing with that contrast in there and making this a little bit more contrasty. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do to this file is I'm going to go up here to my filter. I'm going to go sharpen, unsharp mask, and I've got it set for 120, um, 1 and 3, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and use that setting, but then I'm going to go ahead and, and show you a little Scott Kelby trick. This is something that uh, he talks about in his 7 Point System book. And that is to, before I do anything else to this image, I'm going to go up here to edit and then fade that unsharp mask. Now, I'm not really going to go over here to the opacity slider and fade it, but what I'm going to do is go to the mode and change that mode to luminosity. And what that does is it makes that sharpen just affect the, the luminance values and not the color values, and it actually is a much better sharpening in here. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to save this file out, and we are going to be done. So there you go. That's the process. That's what I would do. Now, I might tweak this here and there, but that's the general process altogether. So um, I invite you to play with this. I only have to warn you, it is dangerous. Once you start doing it to one file, you're going to want to do it to all your files. So if you have any questions, come over to photowalkpro.com. Leave me an email. I'll be happy to get back to you. Otherwise, enjoy your processing.